Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In this 101 video, we're going to look at the power of delegates, or in Unreal Blueprints, event dispatchers. We're going to look at what they are, how to use them, and why if you're not using them, you are missing such a huge part of Unreal's easy performance boosts. So let's get started. What is an event dispatcher? So if I was to say come into my player here and I have a bunch of variables down the side, these variables store data. This one stores an animation montage and some more animation montages. If I jump to my NPC, I've got a name, a dialogue, they're variables, they store some form of data. However, an event dispatcher is almost like a variable because you can think of it like a variable, except it stores other functions. So it can call other functions. So when I get this name variable here, it returns me the data of name. An event dispatcher, if I was to just click down here and create one on play, when I drag it out, I can do numerous things to it. But for example, the most popular one will be call. And this will call the event dispatcher on play. And what that means is any function that you've given or assigned to on play will also be executed. So let's put it into a, some context. So if I were to drag out on play and from the list of things you saw, bind is another one you will often use. So I will drag bind on and what this lets me do is just like with a variable where you will drag it out and set the data, you don't set an event dispatcher, you bind events to it. Think of it like a list where you add to it, that's what we're doing with the event dispatcher. Every time we call bind here, we're saying add this event, if we just add a custom event to this event dispatcher and every time we call play every single event that's been added will be called. If I was to drag off here and go print string and then we say hello and then for example say if I was to do this again somewhere else and go hello to when I call on play here no matter where I call it from because these two events have been bound to it they will both be called in the order that they've been added to the event dispatcher. Let's look at some actual examples to where we will use them. So in my example here I've got this NPC here and my player here. I want to know on my player, for example, when this NPC dies, how would I normally do this? It's a common issue you see in Unity and beginner Unreal developers and people who've only just started using Unreal because the only way for these two blueprints to communicate would be some sort of reference. So let's just do a test and say uh, get all actors are class with tag. So we'll say the actor class is ALS NPC in my case and the tag we will just say ED test. And then if I save this, come back into here we'll just use this npc here if i give him the tag of ed tester then we successfully can get a reference to this act. there we go so we've now got a reference to it and if i drag this up to my event begin play and add this straight after it like so so now i've got a reference to that npc but how do i know when it's dead so the common way for beginners and in unity would be to save this reference so let's just promote it to a variable for example because we don't want to do this on tick it'd be even messier we've got our npc stored there and then we'll come in and we add event tick and then and we drag out the NPC. In my case, I've got a damage component. So we'll get the damage system and then I will get its current health. And then I will drag off here and I'll say, so is it less than or equal to zero? If it is, then we know they're dead. So I can connect this up to tick. And then if it's true, we can print off they are dead. And if it's not, I'll paste it below and go they are alive. And then we can compile and save. And now you'll see I'm being spammed with the error message saying they are alive. Each time the CPU cycles calls a tick on Unreal, it's checking are they alive. Okay, if I punch him, you can see it now says they are there, they are there. Perfect. And that'll keep spamming until they disappear and then the reference will be broken. And that's okay, but imagine if you had like 50 of these NPCs. Or imagine a game to the scale of Grand Theft Auto. If you had to check on every NPC on tick and think of every Everything else you'd be doing on tick as well such as checking if an item has been picked up or if you've died or if a specific NPC's died or if a car's exploded it's really really messy and you can imagine every single tick that's something else your CPU is having to do to try and figure out the logic of the game as well as everything else it's doing maybe not for one or two actors but when you've got more and more in the game it's horrible so let's look at another way of doing this then so I need to know with my player when this guy dies okay so we need to somehow create an event dispatcher on the NPC which can tell the outside world hey I have died so right here I've got this on play event dispatcher so I'm going to get rid of that and 
as you saw in my previous one, I do have an a damage system which tracks my health, and that's okay. So I'm going to go into my damage system here, which is in a custom component. I've got a link to a tutorial in the description. But you can see, basically, I have this function damage taken, that whenever I hit him, it calls this function. It does some logic to really check it out. But right at the end, it calls this event dispatcher I've got here called on death. And all I did was click the plus. I'll just go and do it in here. So you'll click the plus. You'll type the name of your event dispatcher in. So I'll go on death. And then that's it. That's all you need to do. If you want to add some custom variables, to it so you can pass things into the event dispatcher which will then pass it on to anything that's bound to it you can just come and change the input here so i can just come here and say actor who killed me and i could just change it right there and all that i do is when i call it i have to say which actor killed me but for mine for on death you don't really need to know that typically so on my damage system here i call on death Okay, so how do we use it? So I'm going to come to my event dispatcher, and in this tick here, you don't want to bind on tick. That is a really bad idea, don't do that. So what I'm going to do is delete this off, and then just after my event begin play, I'm going to connect it to this branch down here, so it only runs once. And then instead of checking for the current health, I'm just going to drag off the AC damage system, and all I'm going to do is bind event on death. And there we go, bind event to on death, and on death is my event dispatcher. I'm going to click it here. I'm going to connect this up to my set here, and from the event, I'm going to drag down, and I'm going to do add custom event like so. Now, if you've already got an event you want to bind to it, so let's say I've got an event here called died, you can just connect this little red dot up to it like that instead, and it'll do the same thing. You've also got the option to create event here, which lets you pick from an existing function or event that way if you don't want to join it up. So you can see right here, I can connect it to died like that, and then wherever this is, it doesn't matter, it will connect it. I don't need this because I'm just going to connect it up like so. There's some ways you can do it. And then I'm going to drag this branch down here, and well, we don't need the branch anymore we can pretty much just say they are dead because once died is called we know they're dead and now if i were to compile and save and just as a test just after this i will add a print statement in saying hello i will also add a print statement after it saying after and then they are dead so you can see as soon as it plays we'll get one print statement saying hello then we'll get another saying after and then we won't get any more processing ticks checks nothing until they're dead when it calls they are dead so let's go and try and see what happens and you can see at the top it said hello and after and I can just come down to my logs and you can see it says hello and after right there and if I clear it off you can see nothing else is happening no processing ticks nothing's checking constantly and if I run up to the guard and I shoot kill him bang you can see they are dead and that's the only tick we've gone to so instead of having a loop going over and over and over and over and over again checking if they're dead we just check once just one time one tick and then whenever they die then we continue whatever we need to do it's called event driven functionality we're driving things things based on other events happening so we're not checking if somebody's died and then executing it we're simply saying when they die just tell us so we can carry on it's a very abstract way of coding it makes things so much more efficient so let's look at another example then so in this fake example we've got you need to kill a specific guy fine okay that's a thing if i just delete all this off and get rid of the npc say if you want to pick an item up, that's a common thing so i have an item class here called stolen goods so we'll just drop this here and all this has is a static mesh of my um, potion bottle and rotating movement and it's got a parent class right here of pick up item and all this does is check if the player's the one who's hit it if it is then it completes the narrative task that's for quests and stuff but it calls the my event dispatcher on picked up here for this event dispatcher on picked up you can see i'm passing the item itself bpa pick up item to it so whenever i call on picked up i know which item has been picked up so how would we use this exact same way put this stuff back in actually we could use it so i'm going to come and bind to my bpa pickup item just like so and we'll call it ed tester again and then i'm going to drag off of here and just do get and then exact same as we did before we're going to type bind picked up now there is a shortcut to this because you have to bind you have to drag off you have to create your event blah 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 often when you're coding your bind you don't typically have the function you want because you're creating the function there and then so another shortcut you can actually do is dragging off and do assign on delegate and what this basic does is it's just a shorthand to create an event right for it just like so it's a lot quicker it names it it does everything you need it's really nice and then you can see because this is automatically creating my function it's giving me the item i need so i can drag off this and do get name because i've got a narrative name and then i can just simply drag off of here and do print and then i can connect like that so. and then i can compile and save i drag my stolen goods back into here give it a tag of ed tester so all it's going to do when i hit it is check if the player called the event dispatcher which will tell our player you've picked it up so again it on the event begin it's round once we run up and pick it up it goes stolen goods it's printed what nice and easy and very performant
Now let's look at some other common uses because I've looked at when an NPC dies, which is a common thing you might stick into a quest or a task or something, and when an item is picked up. But there are other aspects that you can use them for, and Unreal has a lot of them already built in that you might not know about. Is most of the components you use on a daily basis have event dispatchers built in. So if I was to come and add an audio component to my player, we're giving him a voice basically. Sometimes when I call play on here, I might want to execute something after it's finished. As you can see, there's no way to tell when it's finished. Now you could do it the old way where you come in, you set the sound, and then depending on what the sound is, you also get the length of the sound. If I was to drag off of here and do get sound, and then from here I can drag off and I can get its play length, and then from here I, I could set a delay for example, like so. But that's horrible, that's thread blocking, you're going to do it every single time they play, but there's a better way. So I'm going to delete all that off, and what you can actually do before you call play, it's often safer, you can use one of the event dispatchers that's built into the audio component. So if we just type bind on, you'll see you've got all these different events here, and the one we want is on audio finish. And what this will do is work out all of those pre-calculations for you, the length of it, you don't even need to know any of it, you can just simply come off and do add custom event, and then this will tell you when it's finished running. And that's built into the audio component, and often you might want to sync it with your animation or something like that, it's a really good way of doing it. And when you drag off of a component and just simply type bind, you'll see there's so many different things that you can bind to already, and half of these I'd, I've never even used, but on finished I use quite often. Another common one is maybe you want to play a level sequence, so if I do create level sequence player, like so, give it a level sequence, say shot close up, and then we drag off the return value and do play, like so, but I want to know when this finishes. Commonly, you'll see people open it up, they'll open the shot up, this one's from narrative, and they'll come to the very end, they'll add an event track, and then a keyframe, double click it, and do what they need to there. Sometimes that is the right way to do it, it's not necessarily a bad thing, we're not doing it on tip. But another way to make it even easier is to just drag off the return value, assign on finished, or play, or pause, or reverse, you've got so many different ones, you've even got a camera cut one. So if we just plug this in, just in between here, like so, this will now tell us when this specific sequence has finished, so we can go and do something else. How cool is that ladies and gentlemen? Sometimes when you get plugins, you'll have to plug into them to see how they work and, and make it work with your game's functionality. If it's a good plugin, it will most likely have event dispatches built in. I have used some, not naming any names, expensive three, four hundred pound plugins before, which don't have any event dispatches built in, making it very difficult to actually plug into it. But for example, let's pick a good plugin, one that I'm known for, Narrative Component. It's a very good plugin dialogue system. We can just drag off of this and assign on, and you can see Narrative has so many event dispatchers, so you can really plug in to exactly how you want. So for example, say you need to do something when dialogue finishes, let's bind on to dialogue finish. It tells you which dialogue is finished, and then you can do whatever you want. This is very commonly used if you're showing or hiding shops, for example, and uh, and you've got several other ones you can bind on to as well. So for example, I'm going to bind on to dialogue begin, just like we did a minute ago, and then sometimes you might, in the case of picking up items and destroying enemies, they're going to be destroyed, all references and binds you've made to them will disappear because they've been destroyed. However, sometimes what you're binding to, for example dialogue, won't be destroyed, it's going to still exist. So how do you remove and clean up your code? Now that's really really simple to do. So if you just drag back down, you know where we were typing assign on to get our event dispatchers, or we were typing bind, you have some more called unbind, and you also have unbind all. So you can see these four events I have here, I have assign and bind, which is creating this bind and with the event, but you also have unbind and unbind all. So the difference is unbind event lets you specifically specify an event you want to remove from it. This is commonly the safe one to use. So for example, I can say unbind this event. So when we first come into here, we want to bind to the event begin, then as soon as we've bound to it and the dialogue's finished, we're going to unbind this event from it because we don't need it anymore. And then for example, we could say, you know, um, give player a quest item. Just like that. That's, that's the whole purpose of this. It gives them a quest item. If we didn't unbind this, every single time dialogue starts and stops, it would call this function again, which will keep giving them the quest item, which is not good. So if we unbind from it the first time it's ran, this will never run again, meaning they'll only ever get the item once. Now you could add something before to say, check if they've already got the item, slash if they already had the item, yeah. but you can unbind from it and clear it up. The other option you saw was unbind all events, and this doesn't give you an option, it just literally removes every single event bound to your event dispatcher. I almost never use this one, but there are definitely cases for it. I always keep mine self-contained, I manually unbind it like so, but there are cases for it. They are super
super, super useful. And honestly, once you get used to them, they'll become second nature. They're so easy to do. So just before we quite finish, let's look at some real world examples. None of this theoretical stuff. We're going to show actual prime examples of where you would use event dispatchers. So let's take a look at a quest here that I set up before. So in a previous tutorial, I created a quest where you come and talk to the guy here. He says he can't get through. You need to destroy these barrels. See, so destroy the barrels. Then a guard spawns here and basically says, hey, you shouldn't have done that. And then you have to kill the guard. So let's go and have a quick look at this, the block bridge quest. So you can see it comes in and it says, I need to remove the blockage. So you destroy the things and it's got a kill ask, which we'll look at in a minute. Once you've destroyed it, it spawns a guard and tells you to kill the angry guard. So if we can look at the task here, I've got the narrative. So what I'm doing here is I'm coming in and I'm finding all actors what I'm looking for. So on the first stage, I'm looking for all destructible barrels. On the second stage, I'm looking for all the guards. And then I'm getting, if they've got a damage system, which we looked at earlier, then I'm binding to the on death here. On the function, when they die, I add progress to the quest so I know the objective has been completed. And then right down here, I've got an end task. So when the task is finished, I re -loop through all the actors that I'm meant to be looking for, and then I unbind the event from it here. You might be asking, why do I unbind from it? For example, say if we've got 50 guards on this bridge, and the quest says kill five. So it instantly comes in on the kill actor, it finds 50 actors, it loops through them all, and binds on death to them. That's fine, it's not running on tick, it's really lightweight. And then I come in and I kill five, and add progress goes to five, then add progress in narrative will immediately call end task. But we've still got 45 guards where the on death function is bound to them, and it's going to call this. Well, we don't want that there anymore, because if we kill them later on, we don't want it affecting other quests, and it'll be more process for them to try and call something which they don't need to do. So we simply come in on end task and we clean ourselves up. You could say, why aren't I coming in just unbinding all events? And the reason I'm not doing that is we don't know what other quests are assigned to these guards. We don't know anything. For all we know, there could be a side objective bound to this guard that if you kill this specific one, it completes two objectives. So that's why we're only unbinding this specific function. And that is a real world example where we actively use it. Other common ones would be, I have a narrative task here that opens a portal. So we come in, we tell a portal that it needs to open. The one this task here is for when you use a portal, when you actively go through it. So it connects to the portal. It checks if it's a valid portal first, because otherwise you might be asking it to go to a portal that doesn't exist. And then if the portal does exist, then it binds to the on portal transfer event dispatcher that I've set up. And then it simply comes down when you've done it, it completes the task off and then on end task, it removes the bind from it. If we were to come and have a quick look at the portal, you can see I have three event dispatchers on this one. You can have as many as you want. I have online, offline and transfer. Online is called when the portal is first turned online, which is here, called portal online. That's when it gets turned on. And then we've got turn off, say if the portal gets turned off, call offline. I don't even use them. However, if I ever wanted to use them, say if I had a quest, destroy the enemy's invading portal, you would bind to the on portal offline and then complete your task. But the one we're here to look for is transfer, which is when we use the portal. So we walk into it, it checks if we're a character. And if we are, then it teleports to portal, which comes and calls a bunch of stuff. But at the end, on portal transfer, which simply tells everything that's connected to it, we're transferring through. And that's event dispatches, ladies and gentlemen. Super, super simple to do. You simply come down, add your event dispatcher, call it where you need to call it, and then bind and unbind as necessary. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. What other examples of event dispatches have you used in your code? Have you found any anywhere in your game where you've gone, actually, event dispatches would work better here? Let me know below, because you can make your game super efficient just by removing all these unneedlessly need needed ticks. My name is Decryption. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.